name is Elizabeth Snyder, and I'll be discussing highlights from our recent article in AJR entitled Lymphatic Anomalies in Children, Update on Imaging Diagnosis, Genetics, and Treatment. Lymphatic anomalies comprise a spectrum of disorders ranging from common localized lymphatic malformations to rare complex lymphatic anomalies, and we'll be showing imaging examples of each of these entities. Genetic changes Genetic mutations which cause lymphatic anomalies have recently been discovered and are enabling new molecularly targeted therapies. Finally, we'll discuss the radiologist's role in the diagnosis, evaluation, and management of these patients with lymphatic anomalies. Lymphatic anomalies are categorized according to the ISPA classification of vascular anomalies into simple and complex subtypes. Simple lymphatic malformations are either macrocystic, microcystic, or mixed subtypes, whereas complex lymphatic anomalies are characterized by diffuse or multi-organ involvement. Lymphatic anomalies are caused by mutations in genes encoding components of these oncogenic growth factor signaling conduction pathways. Localized LMs have recently been found to harbor PI3KCA mutations. Somatic mutations in this protein are also the cause of PI3KCA-related overgrowth spectrum. Complex lymphatic anomalies are associated with mutations in components of the RAS, MEC, MAP kinase pathway, which is seen on the left side of the screen. Macrocystic LMs are considered to be those which have cysts larger than one centimeter in size. They are lobulated, um, multiseptated masses, which appear hypoechoic or anechoic on ultrasound, typically T2 hyperintense. And while the septations may enhance, the internal cysts don't show internal vascularity or internal contrast enhancement. These can occur anywhere in the body. When macrocystic lymphatic malformations are complicated by hemorrhage or infection, they may contain internal T2 hypo-intense material, T1 hyper-intense material, or may contain echogenic debris, which is well demonstrated on ultrasound. Microcystic LMs are those lymphatic malformations which have cysts smaller than one centimeter in size. Sometimes the cysts are too small to resolve individually on imaging on either ultrasound or on MRI. On post-contrast MR imaging, sometimes these lesions um, demonstrate ill-defined or even sometimes pseudo-solid enhancement because only the septations are enhancement and the individual cysts can't be seen themselves. Mixed lymphatic malformations so show components of both macrocystic and microcystic subtypes. Complex lymphatic anomalies are characterized by multifocal lesions, um, frequently involving spleen or bones. Um, lymph can leak into body cavities, causing pleural effusions, pericardial effusions, or ascites. It's important to note that clinical and imaging features of these conditions can overlap and diagnosis can be challenging. Finally, um, PIK3CA overgrowth um, spectrum is characterized by vascular anomalies and limb overgrowth. Although the clinical and imaging features of complex lymphatic anomalies um, are sometimes overlap, um, there are some imaging and clinical features which can help make a more specific diagnosis. Frequently advanced imaging, including MR lymphangiogram, MR lymphangiography is needed, um, and occasionally biopsy is needed for a definitive diagnosis. This is an example of generalized lymphatic anomaly and central conducting lymphatic anomaly in a six-year-old girl. On her CT, she had diffuse um, interstitial thickening um, in her lungs consistent with lymph lymphangiectasia. She had multifocal osseous lesions in her spine, and the MR lymphangiogram in this patient demonstrated abnormal central lymphatics as well as leakage of contrast into the bronchial lymphatics. Uh, splenic involvement is frequent in patients with generalized lymphatic anomaly. Uh, this is a case of, of a different patient who had um, multifocal splenic lesions, as you can see here. Um, you'll also note that this patient had multifocal lesions in the um, thoracic spine. Gorham stout disease is characterized by progressive osseous lesions with cortical destruction, and occasionally this can lead to pathologic fracture. These patients also have infiltrative soft tissue masses adjacent to the site of osseous involvement. This is well demonstrated here in this nine-year-old child with Gorham stout disease of the scapula. You can see on x-ray and CT extensive lytic change. Um, within that scapula, and the MRI demonstrates the T2 hyperintense soft tissue mass associated. 
Caposiform lymphangiomatosis is characterized by mediastinal involvement, bone lesions, as well as pleural and pericardial effusions. It's important to note that in these patients, the pleural and pericardial effusions can sometimes be hemorrhagic, as these patients typically have hematologic abnormalities, which can cause um, bleeding into these sites. This two-year-old boy with KLA had extensive spine involvement, as well as mediastinal involvement, um, lymphangiectasia, and pleural effusions, as well as an extensive mesenteric lymphatic malformation. PI3K related overgrowth syndrome is characterized by vascular anomalies. These patients can have any type of vascular anomaly, um, as well as limb or occasionally truncal overgrowth, and they may or may not have epidermal nevi. You can see this patient had um, very severe limb overgrowth of that lower extremity, um, and this patient also had a lymphatic malformation in that um, same leg. Treatment um, can consist of sclerotherapy, typically with bleomycin or doxycycline. Surgery is sometimes required um, if debulking is needed or if there is mass effect. Finally, molecularly targeted therapies can be used um, in patients with extensive or complex lymphatic anomalies. Serolimus is an mTOR inhibitor, which has been used for several years now in patients with extensive or complex lymphatic anomalies. And more recently, PI3K inhibitors are also used in these patients with complex lymphatic anomalies. A lot of patients with um, complex or extensive disease may require more than one um, treatment modality. Thank you for your attention. We hope you will check out our paper in AJR. And if you have any questions, um, I do invite you to connect with me. Thank you.